Chimere is a distant planet. It is defined by waves of life brought from Earth and set free to evolve independently in this new context. The indigenous life of the planet, swarms of microbes called magic by the people who live there, are what harvest Earth organisms and make copies on Chimere. As the asteroid which concluded the Mesozoic never struck Chimere, dinosaurs remain the dominant terrestrial megafauna. The common drake Hysteronyx vulgaris is, as its name implies, the non-avian dinosaur most often encountered in the known world. They are Thyskelosaurs, whose ancestors were burrowers, but they now only dig to find food out of desperation. They are generalist omnivores, eating mostly horsetails, ferns, fruit, and nuts, but are known to eat grass, carrion, and small game when their preferred food is not in abundance. When there's an ample supply of their preferred food, however, they readily cohabitate with mammals that specialize in angiosperms, and it is often noted that common drakes tend to provide an element of peace when sharing this space. Common drakes are especially comfortable grazing with sloths, deer, and kangaroos, but are less tolerant of other browsers and specialists in ferns and horsetails. In the Titan Gardens, where the titanosaurs regularly make fern and grass meadows with their gardening, common drakes and deer are especially successful, and this trio is often considered a hallmark of a healthy Titan forest. Common drakes are proficient swimmers, and can make their home in a wide range of humidities and temperatures, a key to their widespread success. Standing between 3 and 5 feet high at the hips and weighing between 300 pounds and up to a ton in the largest bulls, they are an extreme range in their size. Robust and overall larger drakes are more common in their southern range, with highland drakes of Picardia being among the largest, although there's a good degree of variation. The common drake lives in small matrilineal troops led by the eldest female and defended by a few males who defer to the dominant bull, usually the largest of this male group. Often, several troops will share territory as a herd, foraging in troops but gathering for protection of nests and young. Drakelets hatch after a three-month incubation. Females usually remain with their mother's troop, reaching maturity at one year old, but sometimes will mingle within the herd and join other troops. Males are driven away at maturity, at around two years, where they often form bachelor troops and mingle with unrelated herds. There is some debate about their cladistics, as the common drake shows a wide range of physical and color morphs. It may be a single genus with species that breed freely, but most consider them to be a single species with high range of morphology. It seems they were among the first animals domesticated by the first children upon arrival to the Picardian Highlands. Being social animals that herd without much fear of strange creatures and can eat almost anything, it was a natural candidate for domestication. They are fairly intelligent and took quite well to the quiet life of domestication. Although they weren't terribly important as domesticates for the first children, who mostly subsisted on enchanted grains and insects, they were kept for meat to feed homunculi. Once the civilization of the first children collapsed, these domesticated drakes reintegrated with their wild counterparts. This is believed to be the reason for the high degree of variation in wild drakes. Northern drakes tend to be smaller and more gracile, with their temperate cousins having denser feathers and a stockier frame, but again there is a high degree of variation and overlap in these traits. With feral drakes being a high percentage of many populations, it should come as no surprise that they were quickly domesticated again once settlements were erected to support them. The ages of demons, witches, and even the Dark Ages had various independent domestication events. Regular integration with wild stock has resulted in good health in the population overall. Most people of the known world have common drakes, with breeds specialized for meat, livestock guardianship, labor, and even in some cases, mounts for war and sport. Although quills are mostly bred out of domesticates and their breeds that possess them must be trimmed before being saddled, and the spurs and claws of males coupled with their aggression means that they must be regularly groomed. But with a little maintenance, they can be quite impressive and versatile livestock. The meat is usually preferred by farmers over beef since they can grow faster on less food and can pasture in a wide range of terrain, and their meat is highly regarded. As nesters which push to capacity, 
Females can regularly lay a dozen large eggs a week as long as they aren't fertilized and given plenty of food, making them prized producers. In the wild, common drakes are a popular target for megafauna specialists. While they sometimes run from danger, being defended by quills and sharp plates to deter rear assault, they usually stand their ground, circling around young and harassing threats with beak and claw. Males can be particularly aggressive, biting and raking their talons and spurs into potential threats. They will chase down and kill threats to their young, which is why most mammal predators flee common drakes and many herbivores run toward them. The red panther is the only mammal predator that regularly attacks them. Pouncing from the side to avoid the quills and biting the back of the neck can result in a reliable takedown, although they usually only attempt this against solitary drakes. Cockatrices are perhaps their most prolific predator, gobbling up drakelings and mobbing adults. The thick hide and fat of males' throats can be primarily to protect them from each other, but it certainly helps against a predator whose primary weapon and method of attack is a talon to the throat. Lone common cockatrices are known to bring down common drakes many times their size on their own, but drakes are well documented to give back as good as they get, and on numerous occasions a drake and cockatrice are found having shared the same fate, death by the claws of the other, with the drake having ripped open the fell bird and the cockatrice's talons piercing its throat and locked in place. Thank you all so much for joining me today. This is a quick and unplanned episode as I need more time to work on the river monsters, which has been postponed until next week. I thank you for your patience on the matter, and I have gotten a lot of excitement, and I hope you all enjoy. I also have an announcement to make. As YouTube is rolling out their membership program, I decided to jump in. Much like my Patreon, there isn't going to be a lot of perks. I really want to avoid making Chimera a project that requires people to pay for engagement. That said, I do have my own bills to pay, and the more money I make on Patreon, the fewer commissions and extra gigs I have to take, which means more time for videos. Patreon and sponsorships have been instrumental in getting me to where I am today, and I am endlessly grateful for that. The membership tiers are as follows. Chimera and Snapper, The Sage, $1.99. Indukai, The Trickster. $4.99 Katabo the Reef Warden $9.99 Hukugor the Architect $14.99 Juraz Hent the Curator $24.99 And the Kurujaku River Maker $49.99 If you're able to join the membership program, even at just the Chimera and Snapper Sage tier, that would go a long way in helping me make longer episodes. No pressure, of course, but I would certainly appreciate it. Thank you all so much, and I'll see you next week when we explore the murky waters of Chimera's lakes and rivers to discover all the Piscine monsters lurking below the surface. Until then, stay fantastic, everyone. Cheers, folks!